Hey there guys, it's Joe here for A Eterno today, and we're here for episode number 2 of the F1 2014 game discussion. Today I'm going to be talking about the online improvements that I feel should be made to the 2014 game, and the next episode is actually going to be on career mode, so I'm going to be narrowing them down a little bit, but let's get straight into what I think should be improved about the online. Well, we've got some uh, sprint mode gameplay in the background, and I think, to be honest, that tells its own story about the sprint mode. So, uh, yeah, I suppose that leaves us a good good place to start. The sprint mode um, lobbies, especially in the last couple of years, have been not not great at all. I mean, it's easy to blame Codemasters for this, but at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> it's there's not really much you can do, but... Um, I've I've seen a couple of games actually that that have implemented something called a good and bad sport lobby, which uh, basically puts all the the good sports, so the players who abide by the rules, into one one type of lobby, and all the bad sports, so the one with all the penalties and the DQs, into the others. So I think that's a good idea because it would really sort of separate the people who actually want to race and the ones who just bothered about a demolition derby. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's definitely something to consider, as it has been implemented before. And seeing as there are, they are in the next-gen consoles, I think maybe this is, this is definitely something to look at. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's a racing game at the end of the day. So surely people would just, or a lot of people anyway, want to actually have a, a good race. And the, uh, the other thing, the sprint mode, I think they can, they can sort out is the unfair penalties. I mean, this has been hugely improved, I feel, anyway, for for the 2013 game. The the penalties themselves I think have been improved and also um, given you, you the option to do corner cutting only and also just to turn penalties off completely I think is a great idea, it really was and um, it was a bit of a lack of, of confidence maybe from, from Codemasters but at the end of the day their, their realistic rules have been very good and the, the rage effect, to to a certain extent, has has been a little bit limited, although it has been replaced by the awful, awful lag. Now, it's the lag bubble, but also the phantom cars, which, um, if you don't know, what's basically happening are cars are driving round as normal, but on some people's screens it appears as if they're in walls driving onto the circuits, and um, I think the most famous example of this um, happening was to TRL Limitless, one of the AOR drivers, was in a 100% career race, um, as in the country, and um, it was online, 100% race, I think it was about lap 40 odd, um, it was in Matty G's Fails of the Week, and basically what happens is a car dri drives straight into him, takes him out of the race, and that must be so frustrating that you've you've gone so long into the race, only for yourself to be just completely taken out so yeah I mean the next generation will again just give them uh, a complete sort of clean plate to, to work with and the the disconnections as well I think probably um, there's just you know there's a lot of room for improvement and the disconnections are, are really really frustrating for a lot of people because you know, especially when you're in the the last couple of laps of a race, it is you know it's just so annoying when you disconnect, and it is it is definitely something to look at with the the connections for the next gen consoles. I know I keep going on about this, but at the end of the day, you know, I know I keep saying that as well. Um, it's it's just so frustrating to get these disconnections, and also the equal cars is another frustrating thing online because, you know. You, you, if if you choose the equal cars, you actually want all the cars to be equal, funnily enough. <laughs> but um, the last couple of games, there have been a couple of overpowered cars. This year, it was the Lotus, was a little bit faster in a straight line than all the other cars. Uh, luckily, it paid off for me as I chose the Lotus for the league racing, but um, it did get patched after a while. Although, I think it was the, the Williams car... And the Toro Rosso was a lot, um, the gear ratios were either shorter or higher on a couple of tracks. And that's just something that you don't expect. You know, you just literally want cars to be equal. Get a template of a car and, sorry about that corner cut. <laughs> uh, get a template of a car and just copy it over. I know it sounds easy, but um, I'm sure it's definitely something they can look into. Getting the equal cars right. Now, um, the new features that I feel 
would be great to add to the game would be uh, the increase in the lobby size. Um, now, keeping it at 16 on sprint mode, I think, would probably be sufficient because it isn't very often that you'll get 16 on the sprint mode lobbies. I think the priority has really just got to be to fill out the sprint the sprint lobbies. Maybe even, rather than just making a new lobby when you're the first person, or maybe there's only two or three people in a lobby, it can often be frustrating because you're just looking for a lobby which has got a decent amount of cars in. Maybe just... Um, if a, if a race is near the conclusion, then if you join that lobby and wait for all of them to, to have finished, I, I'd much rather wait a little a little longer, maybe a minute or so longer, and uh, have a decent sized lobby. Maybe have a little um, mini screen in sort of the bottom corner to show to show how far they are in the race. Um, I'd much rather do that than, than wait around in a, in a lobby of two or three people. But um, yeah, I mean, on the... On the others, I feel that 22 cars would be great to have. The full 22 car allocation would be absolutely superb on custom Grand Prix, because I know that definitely leagues would be able to fill those out. Um, it, it really would be fantastic to see all 22 cars on the grid, and um, it it really would just sort of fill out the grid properly. Because 16, although it's great, I mean they started off at 12, which was one of each car. It's great to have a teammate now. And um, it's just a little bit frustrating that you can't get all 22 cars onto the grid. But obviously with this extra allocation that they're getting on Next Generation, I would definitely look into that as I get completely wiped out of the first corner. Now I do think that the because the, this extra memory that I keep going on about, keep banging on about for the Next Generation, what it basically is is the consoles have got a higher allocation of, of uh, memory and than the the current gen or the old gen I don't really know what you could call it sort of the Xbox 360 PS3 they've upped the the memory allocation and I think probably apart from career mode I think online should be their priority because if online is done right by Codemasters next year people will go on it people will use it and it will be fantastic because there's only so much that AI can do there is there it really is only so much that that an AI car can move about, whereas when you're online, you're against real people. You know, you can talk to them on the mic as well, and it is it's fantastic. I absolutely love playing online when you can get a good race without any lag or anything, which has affected leagues so badly this year. But no, I mean, I do think a 22 car grid, although it would be a little bit manic uh, on sprint mode, put it on custom GP, eliminate the lag bubble, would be superb for everybody. Now the one move across rule is something that's in real life Formula 1 which basically means that you can't weave on a... so if I was on this straight now and I was weaving about everywhere then uh, you'd get a penalty for it or at least a warning and if you did it sort of two, twice, three times then you'd, then you'd be given a drive through penalty for it or a time penalty. I think this would be definitely something to look, look into um, because obviously they've got the race in line uh, I know, obviously, you've got the racing line there, but I remember in the in the Young Drivers test, there is a, a test which tests your ability to stay on the racing line. So, which this means that they've definitely got the ability to judge whether you're actually on the racing line. And if you say veered across from it by a certain amount, like twice or three times, then they could give you a penalty because that'd be great because it'd really stop people from weaving about, not letting you through. Because uh, you know, drivers don't get penalised for it. If they don't take you out, if they're literally just weaving about to stop you from getting past, there's absolutely no penalties whatsoever, and you're just going to be frustrated behind and probably get taken out by them not too long afterwards. So, yeah, I mean, this would be great um, to look into because, again, it would just reward um, the, the faster drivers and just the drivers who actually want a decent, a decent game. Uh, now, the one of the final points that I've got written down, the final new feature, is uh, the players using custom helmets. Now, this is definitely uh, this is something that I've uh, really wanted in the last couple of games, really. Ever since about F1 2012, it's been on my mind, using the custom helmets. Now, I know it's going to be difficult for Codemasters to get the license in, uh, sort of like the, the decals to put onto the helmets. But I'm not sure if any of you are familiar, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the, the Forza Motorsport series. Um, what they basically have is a, a custom livery um, sort of paint shop, I guess you could call it, where you can design cars 
and put your own decals on it. Now, I've used this many times, and it really is great. A lot of people are very, very good with it, and they put it on the storefront for other people to use. And they look very, very realistic. Hel um, not helmets, sorry, cars in this case. And what they've basically done is they can get a handful of sponsors that, that are willing to actually put their sponsors on the side of the, the tracks in the game. So sort of like your Rolexes, your UBSs, equivalents in, in F1 2013. So I'm sure that they would probably be able to provide their their own right to be put on the, the helmets, but also just put in the, the block lettering. This is what Forza have done. They've put random shapes. Well, not random shapes, obviously, but just like... They've put the squares, the triangles, all different shapes. Um, they, they've let those um, be be put onto cars. And also just the block lettering so that people will be able to design their own decals. And I think this is definitely, definitely something that F1 can look into um, to, to put in onto the helmets. Now, Steve Hood in the past has said that there is no impediment to uh, let them make their own helmets because obviously they have got their own um, block uh, standard helmets that people can choose from the preset helmets so I, d I think it would ab be absolutely fantastic if people could design their own helmets it give a, a real unique feel to the game and people would be able to design some absolutely superb helmets I think people would definitely be able to recreate the classic helmets and also recreate modern helmets and if they could have like the the equivalent to the Forza Motorsport storefront, then that would also be great because it'd just be great to share helmets, sort of like your Ayrton Senna's old helmet and Alan Prost's old helmet, you know, um, or oh, Severe, people like that. And yeah, that's about it, I guess, for today. I hope you've really enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget to tune in next week, as I say, for career mode um, discussion. But until next time, guys, it's goodbye from me. See you.